Well, that was awkward. It started with me instead of my intro, so I threw the intro in, and here I am. Voila. <laughs> Sometimes I just don't have enough coffee before I get started. So welcome. Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, where we go over some of the numbers so that you can know what's going on in the market, and here's your opportunity to be a big hit at the New Year's Eve parties this week, although I don't know if there's going to be a lot of them with this... Uh, virus continuing to hang in there if you're like me you know a lot of people that are sick and it's distressing so i hope it goes away soon so anyway be careful out there walking down the street you might get hit with a prediction that's what december's like or in the <laughs> real estate industry so today we have 5881 listings on the market but here's the interesting number seven day moving average is showing that we had only 1961 homes come on the market and we had 2171 go under contract. That's considerably lower than where we've been. We aren't at the low of last year yet, which was down here, which was 2585, it says. And so, well, this is 1961. So, yeah, we're actually um, beating last year when it comes to being low. And it is slightly turned here. Instead of doing this spike down like it did last year and coming back up, it's turned not... Not that that really means anything, but it's, uh, it is it is showing the depth of our inventory issue here in Arizona. Something like 93,000 people moved here this year. So here come the predictions. They're everywhere, folks. And they are looking at uh, home price growth slowed slightly. But Metro Phoenix, or Phoenix Metro, still tops the nation. So let's see what they mean by that. <clears throat> They're saying... We reported a 32.3% growth year over year. That's pretty high. Nationally, the trend growth was 19.9. And it said a slight slowdown from September's 19.7. So when you're hearing words like slowdown, that's pretty tiny. But they're talking trends. So um, they're also saying the data comes after the U.S. Census Bureau released estimates that Arizona is one of the fastest growing states in the country. Domestic migration to Arizona was a contributing factor to the growth of 93,026 people relocating to Arizona from other states in a 12-month period ended in July. So that's going all the way back to July. So we continue to lead the nation in growth. That's not a surprise to anybody. And what you see here is the Cromford Market Index that I like to explain from time to time. And it's an index of 100 indicates a balanced market. And you're starting to see they're showing that there was some slowing down. And I want to point something out in this index. And that is right here. See how it's trending down? It's still above 300. So it's really an aggressive index, which means that it's more in favor of sellers. But the fact that it's trending down, this index predicts short-term trends in pricing and inventory and the overall market. And you can see here that in June... July and August, it was going down. And that number I just showed you showed you that September trended down. So September was slightly lower than last year, and so was October. And we could see that coming if you just looked at the index, that it slowed slightly. But as you can see by the index now, we've we've leveled out. So it's hard to tell where that's going to go. And then we look at months of supply which is an indicator of market strength. And we are sitting here at the lowest ever so far at 18.7. That's a historical low. So in other words, that means that's only, that's not months supply, it's days of supply. We only have 18 days worth of homes on the market. So if no other homes come on the market, we're completely out of houses in 18 days. So you can see the historical perspective here, 116 days, 115 days back in 2014. So we're way, way, way in the basement. Census estimates Arizona top state for population growth, growth again in 2021. Well, 2021's over, so why are they putting out that article now? Um, it's, it's saying, but it, it's again, it's saying 93,000, 98,000, they're saying here. Um, the state added 98,000. The other article said 93,000. So there's 5,000 of you that didn't get counted in the last one. So um, it's pretty easy to see that, that that everybody's, you know, that there's a lot of people coming to Arizona. And that is one of the reasons that we're having the price increases that we're seeing. 
just like everywhere else. And uh, Jackie says, I think in three weeks it'll start going straight back up. Boy, I agree with you. I think it's going to spike. It does seasonally every year on inventory. So we'll see what happens. This is um, another one that shows that the Phoenix metro area has a composite index of 57.5. This is a rental index. Basically, it's saying that the, this is still a great market to buy rental properties. And because the year-over-year -year change in house prices is up 32, they're forecasting a price growth of 23.8 in these, this uh, analytical firm that looks at uh, rents. Now, they're saying that's annual price growth, not rent growth. So home price is 23.8. That's considerably lower than we saw in Case Shiller. Case Shiller isn't putting us anywhere near that. Year-over-year -year change of population at 2.1%. So they continue to go back and forth all over the place when it comes to predictions on where our market's going to be. One thing we know for sure, looking at our inventory today, and even if it spikes way up in the next three weeks, which it statistically always does, that we're going to continue to have pricing pressure in January and February. We need to get up to a six-month supply in homes for things to prices to level out or start to decrease. Six months. Right now... We're a half a month, so we have a long way to go, and uh, I don't know how long it's going to take to get there. Um, here's an interesting chart, though. In looking at the relationship between interest rates going up and coming down and purchase indexes, and this is uh, the blue line that you can see behind here. It's kind of fuzzy. If I put my mouse over it, it kind of disappears. It gets a little irritating, and it comes back, but... You can see, let me see if I can illustrate it here, show you a little bit. So right here, you can see that um, in areas where the interest rate starts to go up a little bit, the purchase index increases. So you can see here that rates went down, and the purchase index kind of stayed level, but then as it started to go back up, the purchase index increased. Now here, Interest rates peaked pretty high. Um, we had a dip prior to that as interest rates kind of went from here to here. You can see that people started dropping out right here. This was the taper tantrum down in 2018. Interest rates went up to 4.83%. But you can see the periods where when interest rates come down, yes, there is an increase in sales, but there's always an increase in sales as rates start to go up. So let me show you what I mean where we're at today. I got to get that blue line to show up here. Uh, park it right there. Okay. If you look at the far right end of the chart, you can see that interest rates are starting to come up a little bit. And look at the purchase index. It's increasing. That illustrates that when rates are starting to go up, buyers panic and go out and start purchasing homes every time every time that increase starts to go and people think uh oh rates are on their way up they go out and they start writing contracts and we're seeing some of that today but we're seeing very little activity now over the next two weeks i mean only 2,171 people wrote contracts in the past seven days. Remember, we were rocking around anywhere from 3,500 to 4,000 a week, and now we're down there in that low spot of less than half. Uh, they're just staying home this week. Um, I know uh, uh, we went out to dinner last night with my boys. We went to uh, uh, Rustler's Roost. I don't know if you've been there, but it Rustler's Roost. It's a cowboy restaurant. Got great views of downtown and everything. And, and one of my sons goes, it's packed. I didn't think it'd be this crowded on a Tuesday. I said, well, it's a holiday week, son. <laughs> a million people in there. So I'm going to show you one more interesting thing. And when I show you this, I hope you laugh like I did. And when you do, hit the like button. Jackie says, I got three contracts on Christmas for a 980 home. It was crazy. I didn't want to work. Yep. See, now, Jackie, doesn't that... Remember I was saying that, you know, um, it's a great idea to write an offer like right before Thanksgiving, um, you know, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving because everybody's tied up. They probably sent you that offer on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. They didn't look at it Christmas Day, right? So they wrote you an offer and nobody else was out there doing that. And you got three contracts. That's nuts. It just doesn't happen. But it also says it's don't take your house off the market for Christmas. I'm warning you for next year, don't do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, everyone listened to you. Yeah, that could have happened. So, all right, check this out. This is funny. The IRS says to report stolen property as income 
unless you return it. <laughs> so if you steal a car, you better put that down on your taxes <laughs> unless you give it back. It says here, um, Birmingham, Alabama, an image circulating on social media purports to show an IRS guideline asking taxpayers to revort the value of any property they have stolen each year as income. And it says here, the guideline is real. So if you steal something, you know, you got to pay your taxes. Never mind, you're not going to jail, but we need you to pay your taxes. So, hey, everybody, have a great day as we approach the weekend. Uh, I will be here probably Friday at 3 p.m. with Pat because we have a lot of catching up to do, and we will celebrate the end of the year. Take care.